In what Dahlia Lithwick has referred to as a break the glass moment for democracy, three Tennessee legislators participated in a protest led by students, parents, and educators demanding meaningful gun reform after a mass shooting in a Nashville elementary school. Republicans ejected the two black lawmakers, Justin Jones and Justin Pearson, for, and I quote, decorum violations with no due process. So what was the Republicans' goal in ejecting these duly elected representatives of the people? Well, here's what's really interesting, that after they expelled the two Black representatives, the Speaker of the House, or the Majority Leader, uh, it's what he's called, actually sent a tweet in which he tagged Donald Trump, Donald Trump Jr., Candace Owens, and Tucker Carlson. So they really thought that they were gonna, you know, be heralded as heroes for kicking out these two young black legislators. But I think as we continue this conversation, we'll find out that that really backfired. The, the question is, you know, why did these Republican legislators think that they could get away with this? And I was thinking about this. The, the National Civil Rights uh, Museum in Memphis, Tennessee, they've got a quote up on the wall. And the quote up on the wall is, is from one of the guys who killed Emmett Till, beat him, tortured him, 14 year old African-American boy, just a real threat, right? And this guy who killed him, I'm not gonna say his name, but because of double jeopardy, he couldn't be tried again once he was found innocent of the killing. So he sold his story to a magazine and, and basically confessed and said that he killed this guy. And the quote on the wall of the National Civil Rights Museum in Memphis, Tennessee is from the killer. And this is what the quote says. What else could I do? He thought he was as good as any white man. And that is what's going on in Tennessee. Those black men did not come to heal. How dare they go to the floor and speak up when they were not permitted, they were not authorized, they were not given the okay to speak, to use their voices, to state their opinions that are not only their opinions, but the opinions of millions of people in this country. And these black people got to excuse the word uppity. That, that is exactly right. And, and what's really interesting about all of this is now we have Tennessee on blast. And I hope that Vice President Kamala Harris, who, who may paid them a visit, will actually understand that it's not just Tennessee, but a whole bunch of Southern states who have these super majorities that we need federal, the federal government to step in and provide resources to ensure that people are registered to vote, that they get out to vote, and that we really put in resources that help people fight back because they cannot do it all on their own. The, the, the Tennessee County officials uh, a few days ago, they voted to reinstate uh, Justin Jones. And more recently, they voted to reinstate Justin Pearson. So they're both going back to their seats. I believe they now have to fight for their seats in special elections in order to hold on to them to see who will officially end up in that seat. Boy, these two guys are going to see more dollars donated to this campaign for each of them than they ever have up to this point. And if anything, Tennessee has now elevated these two people to national status. And they're not going to be state house representatives for much longer. And I mean that in the positive sense. They are going to move forward now and they're going to be forces to be reckoned with. Look, I didn't know who either one of these two dudes were until a week ago. Sidebar, Pearson is so cute. Oh my God, I love him. <laughs> he is adorable. Oh, every time I see him, I'm just like, oh, I don't know what it I is. I know, his little, his little afro, he's just yes! like, they probably really hated that. They probably really hated that. I wonder who will the majority leader vote for in the special election? I'm guessing you know, he'll have the choice to vote for Brother Jones since Brother Jones actually is his elected representative. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. Are you talking about the Speaker of the State House? Yes, he actually lives miles from the district he supposedly represents. Uh. 
And so election residency fraud, stealing from the Tennessee Treasury, this is what the people are demanding right now. But yes, Brother Jones is his elected representative. Let that sink in. For the record, what, 11 electoral votes in Tennessee? I, I'm not expecting that uh, the Democrats are going to uh, claim them anytime soon, but this gives me hope. You know, this, I, you see what, what, what the uh, state lawmakers do, and sometimes you assume that all of the people in that state support it and, and feel that way because you don't hear much from them sometimes about it. But we're seeing a very different picture of Tennessee than I think most of us sort of imagine in our heads. The best thing that can happen is for the spotlight to be on the state of Tennessee now uh, for however long that happens. You know, we can all attach something that we understand about politics there now. The state controlled house is run by, excuse me, the state house is controlled by Republicans and they're doing things certain ways, but we see that the people that actually vote are rising up and saying, you better watch yourselves because this is not how we want to be perceived by the rest of the country. And all of the country is looking at us right now. This is a real opportunity for people in Tennessee, if any of you are watching. Speak up now. If you've ever been afraid about speaking up about liberal politics or being a Democrat, now's the time to do it because you know everyone's fired up at the moment and you've got support and you've got a base and people will listen to you. So Tennessee Democrats, take this moment and run with it.